Thank you for the kind introduction. Uh, my name is Diana and I'm, I'll be talking about the feasibility and safety of physiotherapy during dialysis and on patients with femoral lines. This is uh, completely different. I'll be talking um, about a different perspective, about more to muscles uh, in between the liver and the kidneys. Okay, so what is the scope of my presentation? First, I'll talk about the benefits of early mobilization. Um, early mobilization in ICU, mobilization of patients with femoral lines, mobilization for patients on dialysis, and um, give a brief overview on what's the take-home message. So um, what, what are the hard evidence on um, early mobilization? Why do we need to mobilize patients early? The hard evidence is that um, there's increases, it increases peripheral muscle strength, um, respiratory muscle strength, improved physical function, reduces ventilator-free days, improves health-related quality of life, reduces hospital and ICU length of stay, and because of the um, decrease in length of stay, partly, it also reduces costs. Um, it also helps to reduce the incidence of delirium that has been associated with uh, mortality as well. So the benefits of um, early mobilization in ICU is um, there's strong evidence for it. However, it is very, very tempting to actually still keep our patients on the bed, um, not tangle up the lines, not disturb the nurses uh, to, to move the patient. So the barriers of uh, early mobilization still exist, and there are several factors for it. One of it can be um, patient-related. So for example, um, patients who are having um, dynamic hemodynamics um, instant hemodynamic instability, that's, uh, that's number one. Two, they can be on very high dose of sedation and therefore um, are not able to participate in therapy. It can be also be due to the fact that there's a lot of um, uh, there's, uh, tubes, lines and drains and medication that are being um, given to the patient and, and the patient can't, can't do anything much. The second one can be structural. So in the unit, um, patients, uh, there may not be enough um, manpower to actually mobilize the patient. <laughs> Different hospitals have different practices and some units may not have a, a dedicated physio in the ward itself. Secondly, it can also be because of limited training of the personnel. Some um, um, PTs or OTs may not be um, uh, trained enough to mobilize patients on the ETT or know the medical issues that is in the, in the ICU. Um, thirdly, it can be due to the ICU culture. So the nurses and the doctors, they might uh, uh, the nurses may be able to mobilize the patients. However, if the, the culture of the ICU does not prioritize mobilization um, in the ICU, then it's unlikely that this practice would be adopted. Um, the fourth is process related. So um, if there is no process to find or identify which patients are suitable for rehab, then there will be delay in terms of there will be a bit of delay in terms of finding patients who are um, suitable for physiotherapy. So with regards to patients with femoral lines and patients on dialysis, it represents a patient-related factor. So one of it is that um, uh, prior to all the safety and feasibility studies uh, with regards to mobilizing patients on the in the ICU, patients were afraid of um, getting the intubation, intubated patients out because um, they are worried about self-extubation, they are worried about patients being delirious, worried about patients being hemodynamically unstable when you move the patient out of bed. Um, but right now, with all the studies, um, it's found that it's safe and feasible and very low adverse events. Perhaps the same thing can be said about uh, patients with uh, femoral lines and dialysis. So what is the worry that we have when we move patients with femoral lines and dialysis? Historically, in physiotherapy school, we are, we are said to not move the hip uh, past uh, 45 degrees because we are worried of kinking the catheter. Um, there's also worry about local trauma, bleeding and infection when uh, moving uh, this group of patients. Secondly, on patients on dialysis, we are very worried on hemodynamic instability, catheter dislodgement or bleeding at the catheter site, uh, or disruption of the CRRT delivery itself. So for example, changes in the circuit pressure or, and or blood flow. Okay, so are the numbers, um, the, the group of patients who are um, on dialysis and femoral lines, are they significant enough to warrant concern that we are not mobilizing this group of patients? So 4,932 patients with arterial catheters and uh, uh, had, uh, there was a study and found that 45 patients in MICU 
actually had a femoral catheter in situ and 11.5% in surgical intensive care. And this is a huge number of patients that we are excluding from mobilization just because they have a femoral line. Um, in terms of uh, CRRT, uh, it is present in about 5 to 9% of patients admitted to the critical care setting. So this may represent a small percentage of patients, but um, considering the fact that there are many patients coming into the critical care, this uh, is, is still a significant number of uh, patients not being mobilized just because there's a dialysis in situ. Oh, shit. Okay, just give me a minute. Okay, so I'll now move on with the safety and efficacy of mo mobility interventions in patients with femoral catheters in, in the ICU. So Perm et al. is uh, one of the first few people or authors to find out whether it's safe to mobilize this group of patients. So the aim of it is uh, to examine the incidence of uh, femoral catheter-related e adverse events during PT sessions uh, in a cardiovascular intensive care unit. She had uh, 77 patients with femoral catheters, and 92 femoral catheters were present. So 50 arterial, 15 central venous, and 25 dialysis pods. So um, there are certain patients which has more than one femoral catheter in situ. Um, she, there were a total of uh, 630 mobility activities, uh, and she found that um, there's 9% 9, 9 of the patients were walking with a femoral catheter in situ. Um, patients were sitting over the age of the bed, 33%, sitting on a stretcher chair, 22%, sitting on a regular chair, about 11%, and standing, 25%. Out of all these mobility exercises, there were no catheter-related mechanical or thrombotic complications, either during the session or immediately following the, the mobility session. And there were no observations of bleeding, hematoma, line dislodgement, non-functioning catheter, or any changes in vascular status, such as pain, loss of pulse, or evidence of reduced perfusion distal to the, um, to the insertion leg. The second study, which looks at the feasibility and safety of femoral catheters during PT session in the intensive care unit, is being done by the Johns Hopkins people. Um, the aim is kind of similar, is to prospectively evaluate the feasibility and treatment and safety of PT interventions in ICU patients with femoral arterial and or femoral um, hemodialysis femoral catheters. Um, they had a total number of um, 1,074 patients admitted uh, in the ICU, of which 22% had a femoral catheter in situ. And out of 22% all, out of, of the patients, 101 patients received a PT session. So surprise, surprise, there were no um, incidents of adverse events. There were no incidents of non-functioning catheter, removal of catheter, bleeding, or acute limb ischemia. Um, Twenty-three percent of the patients were standing or walking. Thirty-eight uh, percent were um, in just in bed exercises, and patients can actually sit out um, <clears throat> on a chair. Twenty-seven percent of the time, and there were no adverse events at all. So these two studies actually demonstrate how um, th there's a the perception of risk involved whenever there's a line in situ, but this may not be the case in in real life. The third is a mobilization for patients on dialysis. The first study, um, uh, one of the studies that looked at it was um, the feasibility of safety because from the PT's point of view, we are, we are worried about kinking the lines or um, setting off the alarms of the lines. The, the aim of this study is to evaluate uh, the safety um, delivered as part of routine care for patients undergoing CRRT in the intensive care unit. So this is um, in medical ICU. They had uh, 1,313 uh, patients of which 57% of um, the patients receiving PT perform at least one PT session during a CRRT. So the uh, CRT catheter insertion sites um, is as follows. 64% are mostly uh, in the internal jugular line. 34% is tunnel internal jugular. 1% on non-tunnel femoral line. And 1% on non-tunnel subclavian vein. Because of the non-portability of the dialysis itself, um, there were no patients who are walking. 30% of the patients uh, are found to be able to sit over the edge of the bed, um, and this would require patients to actually flex their hip to do so. There's 2% which um, is able to march in place, and 27% is able to do supine cycle ergometry, which for those um, of you who are not familiar with it, is basically cycling on the bed. So it does involve a repeated movement of hip flexion as well. 
So despite um, physical mobility exercises, there were, there were, so they looked at all these safety events, so the removal and dislodgement of CRRT, any bleeding, any dis, uh, removal or dislodgement of any other medical devices, um, and hemodynamic instability as well. So what they found is that there is no CRRT specific safety events that occurred. Um, however, there are six hypotensive episodes with a single event in two patients. Four events occurred in one patient, but it was a chronic hypotensive patient um, who was cleared to do physical therapy despite being um, hypotensive. The last study that I want to um, share with you is the, um, on early mobilization on CRRT, which says that it's um, to find whether it's safe uh, in this group of patients. So Wong et al. divided the patients into three different activity levels. Uh, patients who are unable to uh, participate would be in the passive group. So it really involves the patient to bend and basically ranging of the legs on the bed. Second group is a low-level group for patients who are, un who are able to participate but assess as unlikely able to stand. So it involves, um, the highest level involves the patient sitting over the edge of the bed. Um, the third level is the high-level patients who um, which are for those who are able to participate and assess as likely being able to stand. So the highest level of mobility for this patient would be to stand and march on the spot. They recruited 34 patients. They recruited 34 patients. Um, and this is kind of like a flow diagram of, uh, of uh, how many patients were, um, were given, were allocated to the passive group, low level group, and the high level group. Um, as you can see in the passive uh, branch, in the passive branch, um, all of the patients were having a femoral line. For the low-level branch, nine patients were having a femoral line, three using the IG and three using the subclavian. For the high-level branch, three were using femoral, four IG and one uh, subclavian. They found the same thing, that even with uh, mobility, there were no adverse events with regards to vascular catheter dislodgement, filter circuit clotting or disruption, no bleeding, um, um, or any clinical suspicion of thrombosis or arrhythmias. Um, so the effect of this intervention, which they named it as the MOVE, um, surprisingly, it, it resulted in a three-hour increase in filter life per filter already placed in a patient. So the, the take-home message from this presentation that I want to um, bring across to you is that just because the patients are on femoral lines or on dialysis, it should not preclude them from, the, from, uh, from early mobilization just because they have a vascular catheter or CRRT in situ. Um, however, it, you need to have a good patient criteria. Uh, patients who, who are admitted in the ICU for dialysis is really quite ill, so there has to be a, a, a good time frame for, to go in, and we can't just mobilize uh, a patients if their blood gases are... Uh, are still deranged and their electrolytes still deranged. Um, it should be noted that the ability of the patients undergoing CRRT to stand and march appears to be quite limited. Um, there is also a need to have trained personnel just to see whether there's any kinking of the um, femoral lines just to make sure that um, the clotting factors in the patient is still okay and not at risk of bleeding. Um, my take is that if possible, um, to, to, for the, the team, medical team, to try to avoid the femoral lines because it is quite tricky and I myself am uh, 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 very nervous when mobilizing CRRT patients on femoral lines. Um, so to avoid this altogether, to, to, you know, it's better if the team puts the, the line uh, some, somewhere else besides the hip so that the patients can mobilize um, a little bit earlier and it's easier for the, um, for the physios to get the patient being engaged. Um, so this also, um, it's, it's good to have communication with the team because some of the dialysis are, are quite long. It's very hard to, it's a lot easier to move a patient without the dialysis, obviously. So sometimes you can work around the timing of the dialysis so that we can um, see the patient and engage the patient at a time when dialysis is it's not being run. That's uh, the end of my presentation. Uh, oh, thank, thank you, you. Uh, Ms. Sunny. Thank you. <laughs>